Well, we're back starting a new term, and today's subject is the big picture. What do I mean by the big picture? The big picture is um, a summation of what it is you're trying to accomplish in your painting. You should be able to summarize this in one sentence, ideally. And this summarization of what you're trying to do through your painting acts as a sort of guide for the artist when making decisions about what to include, what to edit, how to exaggerate certain features. Um, it provides a a guide for a lot of the decisions that the artist has to make. and it helps to think about this before you begin your painting. What do I want to say? What do I want to communicate through this piece? Today's piece is based on uh, the image that you just saw, which is a photograph of the Fenway in Boston, which is close to me. It's a city park, but you didn't see any buildings. All that you saw was these beautiful trees over a body of water. and um, this was d observed and recorded in the early morning. So the light of the early morning plays a big role in this painting, which is why I call the painting Early Light Fenway. And what I would like to communicate, or the whole reason for doing this painting, what inspired me and what I want to share with people through this painting, is that sensation of early light falling on the trees, uh, the beginning of the day, things are very calm and clear and cool, and uh, that's what I would like to communicate. So this is influencing my decisions on a lot of things. With these washes that you're observing now, I'm, I'm, I'm performing that gradient wash that we practiced in class, going from a cobalt blue to a yellow ochre, and then from that same yellow ochre to a cobalt blue. Uh, the yellow ochre has a bit of cad red mixed with it, so there's some pinkish color to it. These two colors, yellow ochre and pink, evoke the sensation of morning light. If you observe morning light, it definitely has a particular quality. And uh, that's what, what, probably the main thing that I'm striving for in this painting. That's what I want you to experience. That's what's influencing a lot of my decisions. The graded washes here serve as a precursor to the trees and foliage and so on. It's uh, important to note that the transitions are smooth, even, calm. There's a, a transition from the cool blue to the warm yellow at the horizon. And uh, this has a lot of bearing on the overall effect of the final painting. I'll point that out again, but I want to remind you that these graded washes, especially in this painting, play a big role in creating the emotion, the sensation that we feel when we look at the painting. I've started on the right side with some distant foliage and if you noticed I used a very warm green, a yellowish green to start and added some blue as I went along. The reason for this is I want to keep it light and warm with a hint of shadows. I don't want to get too dark in the distance. Now I'm addressing my main subject which is a tree which is close to the water. I believe it's a locust tree, has a huge beautiful canopy and that the topmost part of the canopy is the place where this early light is really. So I continue to work on this tree adding uh, the shadows that contribute to the feeling of a strong light hitting the tree. And uh, as I'm building the tree I am referring to the photograph but if you compare the photo with the tree that I'm creating and mine is a bit more well I'll say it interesting now oh, why is that if you look at the canopy I've created there's a little more of a 
varied edge. Uh, the sunlight that's hitting the tree is a little more intense. The overhanging boughs a little more elegant. And this is often the case when you're painting in nature. You see an inspiration, but uh, if you're experienced with the motif, such as trees, in this case, and uh, know how to make the tree a little more interesting, this is what the artist does. They take that tree and they and they fashion it in a way that pleases them. It's It's got a base in reality, but often in the certain characteristics are exaggerated. So this middle tree is, is complete, and I've started to work now with very uh, energetic brushwork on the left-handed tree. You'll also notice that uh, the tree is darker, it's grayer, and it's creating a sort of frame for this other tree. It's creating a, a contrast to this tree, which, which helps us to enjoy and appreciate the, the middle tree. It's got a purpose, in other words. It's got a purpose in this um, visual expression, and that is to support the big picture, um, which means morning light falling on this tree, the middle tree. All right, the paper's dried, and I've extended the reflections down now. And you see I'm going at it very rapidly with um, energetic brushwork, and I do that intentionally to create a... A vibration create the energy rather than try to really replicate each detail of the previous stroke I I look at it and I move the brush with some quickness and and uh, confidence even if I'm not confident I try to <laughs> pretend that I'm confident and I, I, I oftentimes it shows in the brushwork here that reflection is showing a, a reflection of the tree and at the same time it's showing an energetic expression with brushwork. That's important to me when I'm painting the watercolors as, as you can probably tell. So uh, moving now from the, the left reflection to the middle reflection, with these reflections there's two things that I'm consciously exaggerating. One is I'm making the shape just a little longer. I'm trying to make the reflections themselves a little longer. The reason I do this is uh, it looks more like um, a reflection if it, it has a little bit of length, a little bit of exaggeration to it. It feels more like a reflection on a, on a wet surface. Uh, the second thing that I'm doing is I'm making it flat and in one sense it's being true to what was there and I'm exaggerating it a little bit but in a more important sense it's again focusing your eye on what's going on on the tree bits above it. Uh, I've extended the reflections now on the right hand side as simply as possible almost uh, seven strokes if I counted them to create the reflections they're paler, they recede to this other tree, especially that overhanging bough that we see, that's, that's a real point of interest. And then I realize as I'm looking at this painting that the, my, inner, my eye travels out of the painting a little too easily on the right and left corner, lower corner, upper corner. So I'm taking care of that corner now by means of just carrying in a, an a tree that's overhead, a few leaves and branches coming in from the upper right. This helps to gain focus again on that middle tree and the light that's falling on that middle tree. I have a, an idea for how to handle the lower corner. I'm going to um, add a deeper gradient and some ripples to the water, especially in this right-handed corner so that we feel um, that it's concentrating the energy towards the middle of the painting. So there's ways that you can address this uh, that work with the image that you're trying to create and uh, make the composition stronger. And uh, I think we, we accomplished what we set out to do, the big picture, the morning light in the Fenway.